I visited in the, in the, in the, in the past, which uh, people still remember who are alive. So it's like a recent past. And um, so it is a dynamic past and uh, still kind of could be interpreted. And um, so that is my kind of field of interest in terms of time. So if a filmmaker or a, an artist says, my past has nothing to do with my art, I, I have to look at the person and say, I think you're lying. Or I don't think you're thinking about the real genesis of your work. Artists are always dealing with uh, kind of uh, limiting institutions. And uh, within certain periods and certain uh, political setups, the, the institutions are more controlling the limits of expression. And this particular film is, um, is uh, made according to the testimonies of the people, of the gay people who lived in uh, Lithuania. But also they were uh, very much associa associated with um, kind of arty sort of crowd or whatever. So in a way it is a metaphor for artistic freedom in a way. And, um, but it is kind of mix of um, certain elements from today and from the 70s. So it is kind of a uh, sort of trigger. It's clearly taking place in the 70s, but it is still um, relevant to contemporary present. For me, history is then, now, tomorrow. It's a constantly revolving, linking process. And I've always been worried about the way we don't honor or reflect history. I think it's becoming, I'm sorry to say this, I'm very pessimistic. I used not to be, maybe even up to five years ago, but I think about this a lot. I wonder why it is that as a species, we have allowed this to happen. We seem as a species to be very much influenced by moving pictures, moving pictures and sound. We give them incredible, we give them credence, believability. We're impressed. We don't like criticizing them. Well, anachronist technologies uh, very much uh, interest me and uh, because they are producing the image from the period they were produced, this equipment. And in this way, it is possible to approach with a kind of archaeological sort of way to the media. And in some, some time, especially it concerns um, sound equipment, uh, the quality of reproduction of sound is better, for example, of the 40s than the equipment is produced now. So sometimes the technology degrades. So with the image, it's kind of going up with the kind of digital high definition and so on. Even some people don't like it, but I think it's quite a progress. But um, the sound, the majority, for example, of people are listening sound with the telephones. You know, right? So compared to the very profoundly produced systems of the 30s and the 40s, it's a big, big degradation. So introducing this into the practice, into kind of film or sound work I do, that what interests me. I think that um, I always try to juxtapose image and sound. And um, because um, I want um, efforts from the viewer to kind of uh, put it together in a way. Because I think in the, in the media, in the film or in television production, often sounds and um, images are uh, doing the same. I mean, they, are, they have exactly the same information. They're kind of literally repeating it itself. So why it should be done like this way? So because the sound can have one information and the image can have another one, but then you need an effort, intellectual effort, to kind of put it together. I'm not interested only in my process, unpredictable process of the, or the people who participate, the audience, and the unpredictable processes of the people who are in the film. There's three elements. My process, the people who are the subjects or the actors or whatever you want to call them in the film or the recreators, and the audience. In the audiovisual field, the audience is always simply there mostly as a passive receiving element.
which they're not, of course, but they're seen as this. I, I'm very interested in challenge the people to think. I like that people need effort to kind of view my films, and of course not only my films, but um, some films. And this is why I play with this uh, exposition quite often.